smiling faces. Keep, keep smiling, okay? That's what we're here. Are you here because you love the Lord and want to worship His name? Amen. Amen. So am I. It's a beautiful day, beautiful day. Hey, I just want to tell you one thing, one little quick thing here in these uh, uh, little devotionals I have. People who sing, they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of saints. That is found in Revelation verse 15, uh, chapter 15, verse 3. Did you know that emperor penguins love to sing? They are among the most musical creatures on earth. When courting the male and female bow and sing to each other, her voice is soft and gentle. He sings loud and long. After the mother pig penguin has laid her eggs, she goes off to the ocean for several weeks to feed. While she is gone, the father incubates the eggs and sings. After regaining her strength, the female comes back to the nest and sings as well. And shortly before the little one is hatched, if you lean in and listen closely, the little chick is singing. <laughs> the people of God are also singers. When Moses led Israel out of Egypt, he paused to praise God in song in Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 18. Deborah sang in victory in Judges 5. David's songs were numerous. Many songs began with the reference to singing. The disciples sang in the upper room in Mark chapter 14, verse 26. Paul instructed believers to sing in Ephesians 5.19 and Colossians 3.16. And our verse for today tells us the song of the redeemed in heaven. Amen? Amen. We're going to be singing. Are we singing Christians? Are we expressing the joy of the Lord in song? It may not always be on our lips, but it should resound in our hearts and minds. If you have no song, something's wrong. Christians are people who cannot help but sing. Amen? Amen. We are here today because we love the Lord. Not for what He can do for us, but because we love Him. We're here to reverently worship Him. Amen? Amen. This first song, one day, is the gospel story in one hymn. And you cannot cut out one of these verses. So we're going to sing all five. <coughs> but we're only going to do the chorus on the first and the last stanzas. So be ready for that. One day, amen? amen. One day we'll see. One day when
message here today. If you have a bulletin, inside that bulletin there's a slip that you can tear out. And we just ask you if you'll place that in the offering plate when it comes around today. We'd love to have a record of your attendance today. Also in our Sunday school today, we had 116 in attendance. We had an offering of $2,500. We had five contacts and ten visitors. Let's pray together and then we'll welcome one another. Father, we come to you today. Lord, as we have this table that is set before us. Father, I pray that we take the time. We take this precious time that we're here to meet together before your presence to prepare ourselves for what you have for us. Amen. God, I pray that you enlighten us today through our glorious worship that we have to offer up to you. Lord, may our lives be a sacrifice to you. Amen. Lord, everything that we say, everything that we do, Lord, will be glorifying to your holy name. Father, I pray for our church today. Lord, we pray for all the churches in our, our, our world today, Father, that as people are meeting together, even at this very time. Yes. God, I pray that you speak to us. Oh, Lord, that people will hear your voice. Amen. Yes. Oh, God, that we will do your ways. Father, I pray. That you be with us as a nation. God, that you will be glorified of us as Christians as we walk, as we talk, as we go out into this world today. So Lord, I ask you to prepare us today for what is in store for us for this week to come. Lord, we have so many activities that are coming. Lord, we have so much to do this week. But Lord, today, we're only here to serve you. Amen. We're here to worship you. We're here to glorify your great and holy name. Father, this Easter season <laughs> sets my soul on fire. Amen. And God, as we come and as we worship you, Lord, you are the risen Savior. Right. Amen. You Amen. are our living God. So, Father, I pray today, Lord, if there's one here that needs you for eternal life, I pray, God, that they surrender their life to you today, submit their ways to you. And, Father, I pray that we as a church, Lord, we will be the church you have called us to be. So, Father, I pray that you will equip us today through your word, through singing. God, I pray that every key, every note that is played on the instruments, Lord, will glorify your name. Amen. Every voice that shouts to you today will glorify your name. So, God, I pray that you anoint this service right now, Father, yes. with your Holy Spirit, with your Holy Presence. God, we want to meet with you. Yes. Lord, we want to hear from heaven today. Yes. So, Lord, speak to us. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome Amen. one another. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know.
Well, on behalf of the choir, I would like to say we don't get the chance to get down and welcome everyone, but we do all welcome everyone Amen. here this morning. It is a real honor to be in the Lord's house this morning to sing of our Redeemer. Amen? Amen. And we're going to sing of our Redeemer. I have just one thing to say. I have to say that today is my middle son's birthday and I would like to say Yay! happy birthday to Charles. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Have all three been a blessing. What a blessing children are. Mothers and daddies, amen? Amen. 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 I will sing of my Redeemer. Now, we're going to do the same thing on this one. We're going to sing the chorus on the first and the chorus on the last. All right? I will sing of my Redeemer, number 285. Look to the screen. Oh 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you so much for this day, for your day, Lord. And Lord, I just want to thank you for the ones that are here, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Uh, Lord, I just pray that today, Lord, might be the day that someone might come to know you, Lord, or just that refreshing, Lord. And Lord, I just uh, lift up the uh, <clears throat> Lord's Supper to you, and I just pray, Lord, that it might be truly a time to examine, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for this offering. I just pray that it might glorify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And a very good morning to all of you. For those that are visiting and otherwise with us this morning, my name is Lloyd Epperson. Since last, around the first part of November, I've been in and out of the hospital, into nursing homes, into intensive care, out of intensive care primarily cheated the devil out of his dues because God's not through with me yet. Amen. I have been deathly ill. This church has come together in prayer, in prayer meetings. They have prayed for me, my wife, my family, and even the little bitty prayers I'm here to testify that God does answer. Amen. God answers <coughs> congregational prayers. He answers individual prayers. And I'm proof positive that he does answer prayer. I appreciate it. My family appreciates all of your prayers. And don't stop. Keep it up because I'm still in need of prayer along with my family. But it's great to be a a Christian, it's great to be a member of this church, and I thank each and every one of you for all of your prayers, and my family thanks you. May God take a liking and bless you and your families. Amen. Good morning. How are y'all? Good. 
Well, as y'all can see, I've been outside, haven't I? Yeah, because today's the fish fry, I bet. Yeah, because today's the fish fry. Yeah, but that's not why I've been outside. Oh. I, I've been outside for two days straight because my wife locked me out of the house. <laughs> yeah, for preaching about her last week, she locked me out of the house. I didn't get to eat for two days. I didn't get to sleep for two days. I've been outside like an animal outside. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I was outside yesterday all day, and I got wind burnt. It's not sun. It's wind burnt. It was blowing so hard. All right, I, I want to share something with you today. How, how old do y'all want to live to be? Somebody tell me. How old do you want to live to be? 105. 105. Very good. A thousand. We'll have to change your name to Methuselah if you live a thousand years old. What else? Ladies, how old do you want to grow to be? Uh, 90. 90, okay. All right. 99. 105. 105. Seven. seven. You just want to grow to be seven. <laughs> I like that attitude. If we just get to seven, we'll be all right. I like that. If I can just get to 41, I'll be all right. 145, okay. Okay, maybe I should ask it like this. How many of you want to die at a young age? No, 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 none of us, none of us. But how many of us want to grow and die at an old age? Yeah, well, we want to live as long as we can, right? I mean, uh, but, but the Scripture tells us, and, it, and this is why it's so important to read Scripture, okay? Because it found in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. You realize that's a commandment of God, that we are to obey our parents? So when our parents say, go make your bed, we're not supposed to ask why. We're not supposed to pitch a fit and say, Ooh, I don't want to. We're supposed to go do it, right? You know why? You know why we're to obey our parents? Well, the Bible tells us. So that you can grow older. It says, honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. So I, I want you to take a look at some of our congregation today. And you can kind of see who's older and who's not so old. But the older they are, guess what? The they, more experience they had. Well, the more experience they <laughs> But they honored their father and their mother. They obeyed their parents, okay? So that's a promise from the Lord that if you want to live a long life, we've got to obey our parents. Now, let, let me tell you this. This is how you can shorten your life. This is how you can shorten your life, by not obeying your parents. When they say, do not cross the road, and you cross that road, you take a chance of ending your life early, right? You might get run over by a car. If your parents say, do not text and drive, Right? You might get smashed. Yeah, you might be in a car accident. That's right. And you can, you can lose your life early that way. All right? If your parents say, do not play with fire. Right? How many boys like to play with fire? You could have let someone on fire or let yourself on fire or burn down your house. Get burned. That's right. Burn down a house. Brody yesterday was trying to light a fire near my mom's dog. Uh-oh, we're telling on somebody now. Sorry. Uh-oh. So, when we think about obeying our parents, now listen, this is what I want you to learn most of all, okay? Now, there, there's a way that you can obey, but there is an, an immediate obedience that we need to understand, okay? When I'm talking about immediate, okay, when your parents say no, what does that mean? Do not. No, what does it mean? Just not. No. That's it. That's all it means. No. All right? Yeah. There is a reason why they say no or stop or don't do that. There's a reason why, okay? Because as just as you said, they've got a lot more experience, okay? So this is something I want you all to understand. Understand this. Instant obedience, Okay? Not when they say, don't cross the road. Don't say, why? I do it every day. Why? why? No, don't. Just don't. Okay? Take their word. When they, when they say don't, say no. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so.
So we need to learn instant obedience because this is what's going to happen. Okay? If you don't obey your parents, listen to me, you're not going to obey God. You hear me? If you're not going to obey your parents, you're not going to obey God. And this is, this is why God gives us parents. Because we need to obey our parents. It teaches us obedience. Okay? It teaches us that we need to listen to their voice and we need to do what they say. Okay? I know that you might think you're smarter than them. All right? I, I've, I know. Exactly. I was smarter than my dad at one time. I really was. I was a lot smarter. A lot smarter. I, I knew everything. But then there came a day when I was like, uh-oh, maybe I don't know it all. So we need to make sure that we obey instantly, okay? Because there might be a day when God says no, or God says go, or God says something. We need to be able to have instant obedience, okay? Can y'all learn that with me? Can you practice that with me? All right, let's pray together. Lord Father, we do thank you for these children. We thank you, Lord, that they are a gift from you. And Father, you've blessed us with so many children and teenagers and all these people here today. Father, I just pray, Lord, that we learn to obey our parents. Lord, even, even me, I pray, Lord, that I learn to honor my Father. So Father, I pray, God, that you give me wisdom and courage. Lord, I pray that you give these children what they need to know, to grow healthy, to live long lives here on earth. And we give you glory for that. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank y'all for coming. Lord, we thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, it's so good to have you back with us. And, uh, amen. We love you. You and Alita mean, they mean, <coughs> you mean so much to this church. And, It is no secret what God can do, what He's done for others, He'll do for you. With arms wide open, He'll pardon you. It is no secret. What God can do The chimes of time Ring out the news Another day is through Someone slipped and fell Was that someone new? You may have longed For any strength Your courage to renew do not be disheartened, for I bring hope to you. It is no secret what God can do, what He's done for others, He'll do for you. With arms wide open, He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. <clears throat> there is no night for in His light you never walk alone, always feel at home, wherever you may roam. There is no power can conquer you while God is on your side. 
just take him at his promise. Don't run away and hide. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Barbara. I ask you to take your Bible with me, if you will. Turn to Psalms, Psalm 82. Psalm 82. I want to ask a favor of you this morning. If I could have those 20 minutes back from last week. Remember, I told y'all that, that y'all that came last week, I said, we're just going to just be short and simple to the point this morning, 20 minutes in and out. Well, I need those extra 20 minutes from last week. I need them today, okay? All right. Psalm 80, I'm sorry, did I say Psalm 82? Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Psalm 81. I want to read, read one verse, one verse. Psalm 81. Hey, and by the way, I'm so glad you're here today. It, it is so nice to be able to look out and to see people who want and desire to love the Lord and serve the Lord. I mean, there's nothing better than to see people who are so consecrated for God that they will be here to learn in His Word, to fellowship with like believers, and so I pray a special blessing every Sunday, that every time we meet here, that we will be encouraged in God's Word. Psalm 81, I want to read verse 13. We looked at this last week. Oh, that my people would listen to me. That, that is a, a beg from God. God. God is begging. Would my people please listen to me? Because God knows it all, doesn't he? God knows it all. God is the God of today, yesterday, and tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen in the future. And all he's asking for, oh, that my people, are you one of God's people today? He's talking to you. Oh, that my people would listen to me. That Israel would walk in my ways that my people called Israel would walk in my ways. God has a plan. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. The problem occurs when we don't know what that plan is, when we don't know what our purpose is. So this morning I pray that by the Word of God and by the strength of the Holy Spirit, when we leave here today, we will know what God's plan is for us that we'll listen to God, and we will do according to His ways. Father, today, we thank You, Lord. We thank You for the freedom that we have to be able to gather together as Christians. Oh, Lord, I pray that the day never comes that we can't meet, that we can't meet before You in public buildings like this. So, Father, I pray that today, that maybe this is the last worship service that we sit through. Oh, Lord, that it may be glorifying to you. God, that you may be glorified. Lord, as we get into this Easter week, this Holy Passion Week, oh God, I pray that you be glorified because we serve a risen Savior. God, you're alive. So Lord, we ask for your Spirit even now. Lord, that you will teach us through your Scriptures. Lord, that you will give me a message through my lips that will be divine and not human. Father, I pray that you will speak to your people. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, there's nothing 
more important to me, and probably you could agree with this too, there's nothing more important to you than knowing that you're pleasing the Lord, that you're satisfying God Almighty. You see, when we think about are we pleasing God, you see, you can please God with many different areas of your life. You can please Him with your mouth. You can please Him with your hands. You can please Him with your feet. You can please Him with your entire body. The question is, are you pleasing God today? We saw in Psalm 81 that the Lord is asking, God is begging His people, will you please listen to me? Parents, how many times, how many times have you had to ask your children, will you listen to me? Raise, that, raise your hand if you've ever said that, parent, every one of us. Would you please just listen to me? And I want to go a step further. How many of you parents ever said this? If you don't listen to me, this is what's going to happen. Yes. There's consequences that come when children do not listen to their parents. But listen, we have somebody that we call Heavenly Father. And when we view him as our Heavenly Father and he speaks, we are to listen. We are to listen to what he has to say because what he has to say to us is only good. What he has to say to us is encouraging, challenging, and we need it in every day of our lives. I, I want to apply this. I want to take some application from the Word of God because I said to you last week, that every question that we have has to deal with how do I know the voice of God and how do I know the will of God? How do I know that I'm walking according to God's will? How do I know if I'm in God's will? I'm so thankful that we have the scriptures today. I'm thankful that we can open up our Bibles and we can turn and we can get the answers to our questions. So turn with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, some very familiar scriptures for some of us. But I want to use this scripture today to show us how we can know that we are in God's divine will. That we are walking according to His ways. You know, there's a lot of decisions in life that we make on a daily basis that really you don't have to pray about. That really you don't have to ask God about. I call those common Christian sins. Just common Christian sins. This is everyday common Christian sins. All right? Questions like this. Should I go to church? Absolutely. Because the Bible says, don't forsake the assembling together. And that's just common sense. When you wake up and you say, oh, should I go to church or not? Those are just common sense questions, right? I mean, should I get up and go to work today? Yes. Those are things that just are just common questions. Should I not lie today? Of course not. I mean, those are common Christian sense questions. You, you don't have to pray. Lord, should I lie about this? I, I'm going to tell you what he's going to say. No, don't lie. Lord, should I cheat on this test? No, don't cheat on the test. Lord, should I steal from my neighbor? You're wasting your time because you know what the answer is, right? Should I tithe? Yes, the Bible says so. But what happens? What happens when we disobey God? What happens when we lie? What happens when we cheat? What happens when we rob God? What happens all this? I'm going to tell you what happens. We, as His people get out of alignment, right? I mean, you've got a vehicle that's ever been out of alignment, all right? You, you let go of the steering wheel, it goes whoop! But what, what, because you're wanting to go this direction, naturally, but God has a certain direction that He wants you to go. God has the right path for you to go. And when you veer off the path, you become discouraged. When you come off the path that God has you, you become disappointed. You become negative. And when you get to that state of mind, you have to stop and ask yourself, am I in God's will or not? Am I walking according to God's ways? And the question, the answer to that question is very, very simple. You can figure this out, okay? That's why I want to use Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, because 
we see some application here. Let's read uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and it, it's going to help us to be able to see some things. He, Paul's writing to the Christians in Rome. He gives some theology in the first 11 chapters. We come to chapter 12 and we see a, a switch gear. We go into a mode of application. We go from teaching to, okay, this is what you need to do with that teaching now. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that therefore is therefore a reason. Always when you see therefore, it's there for a reason. He's going back to what he was talking about beforehand. Theology. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I, I said a while ago, there's a lot of common Christian sense in the world, right? I mean, we know these things. And this is what Paul is talking about, that it's, it's reasonable service. Verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove... What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? In other words, what Paul just said here is, hey, I've got your answer to your question. And you can prove it. Because he goes on to say, prove that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know what that tells me about the will of God? Number one, it's good. The will, the plan of God is good. You know why it's good? Because God is good. Is God good to you? God's will is good. God's will is good for you. God has a plan for you. God knows what he desires for you to do. It is good because God is good. Now, there's, there's a lot of scripture I want to share with you. And some of you Bible theologians, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. I just don't have the time to point out all the scriptures today. So when I, when I say some of these things, jot down some notes, go back and look some of this up, okay? So when we talk about God's will being good, it's because God is good. We also see that God's will is acceptable. In other words, God will never ask you to do something that he's not going to give you the strength to do. God is never going to call you to do something and not equip you to do it. It's acceptable. God is not going to challenge you Beyond what you can do. God knows your limits. God knows what you can do. Now I know sometimes, listen, we live in a dangerous world. All right, We've got missionaries overseas who are doing the will of God. They are living and serving their lives for God. Now listen, and some of them die. Some of them die serving the Lord. Okay, But Paul always said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. What's the worst thing that can happen? You die, and you're in the presence of God Almighty. So there's nothing better than knowing that God's will is good, that God's will is acceptable, and then thirdly, listen, it's perfect. God's will is perfect. Now, I, I know some people might say, well, you know, there's a lot of things in the Bible that I know that I should do. But there's a lot of things in my life that the Bible's not clear about. Number one, who am I to marry? The Bible does not say turn to Ephesians chapter 2 and you'll find out who you need to marry. There, there's some things that we need to listen to God about. There are some decisions that we make in life that we must listen to the voice of God. Because when we do listen to God, He has a perfect will for us. I know what some people say. Well, you don't have to pray about what house to buy. You don't have to pray about what car to buy. God, God will just, just help you out if you make a wrong decision. I, I don't look at it that way. Because if God does have a perfect will, He has a perfect plan. And when we line ourselves with His perfect plan and perfect will, we're going to live a blessed life. We're going to reap the rewards for listening and obeying the voice of God. Now, I shared with you, and I want to share with you again, how do we listen to the voice of God? How do we hear the voice of God? How do we know what, what God's will is for us? Because we need to hear these things. We need to know these things, right? Through the Word of God. Open your Bibles. 
Open your Bibles and God will reveal to us what His will is. Number one, you know what God's most number one priority will for all mankind is? That all men may be saved. That all people will be saved. So listen, if you want to know God's will for your life, you're going to have to be a born-again believer. Because you can't hear the voice of God if you're not saved. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. You see, there was a lot of people that didn't hear the voice of God. There's a lot of people today that are confused because they don't hear the voice of God. And I have to say, maybe you're not one of the sheep. Maybe you're not part of the flock. If you want to listen to the voice of God, number one, you must be saved. You must be born again. In other words, you know Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. Do you know Him today? A couple of you? Now listen, next week's Easter. Now we practiced this a couple of weeks ago, right? He is alive, right? He is alive, all right? He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. Jesus is alive. That, 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 that tells us, hey, listen, could you imagine being a Buddha worshiper? Could you imagine? I mean, I, I, I know I'm being, trying to be funny here, but I couldn't imagine praying to a fat man that's dead, <laughs> half dressed. I just couldn't imagine. I, I couldn't imagine, oh, Buddha, that you will help me today. Why? Buddha's dead. B B Buddha's not here. Jesus is alive. Jesus is forever going to be alive. So that's who we need to be talking to. We need to be talking to the one who knows the future. We need to be talking to the one who knows what you're thinking even right now in your heart. That's who we need to be turning to. That's who we need to be listening to. To listen, it's so easy to turn on uh, talk radio, turn on your TV, and you'll have all kinds of sitcoms and different television stations and radio stations telling you what you must do, how to live a blessed life, how to enjoy life. Listen, that's all garbage. The only way that we can know the perfect will of God is right here in His Word, opening up His Word, reading it and allowing God to reveal Himself. Now, God reveals Himself through His Word, through His Holy Spirit, through prayer. So important that we pray. God reveals Himself through circumstances. God reveals Himself through godly people. Be careful, Christians. The next time you give somebody advice, and you didn't pray about it. When somebody comes to you and says, Should I get a divorce? You better be prayed up because they might be the only one that they listen to. And if you give them permission, they're going to make that decision. There's a lot of people today turning to godly people. And, and listen, that is where we as godly people, we must be prayed up. And if, you, if somebody comes to you and says, I, I really need to get some advice from you. All right? uh, there, there's been several times I didn't know what decision to make. I, I would phone call my, my dad and I would say, Dad, I, I've got this situation going on. What must I do? What can I do? And this is what he always says. Have you prayed about it? You see, that, that, that's the response of a godly person because when, when you, that is your first response. Number one, have you prayed about it? In other words, have you consulted God about this matter? So important. Because nowadays... A lot of people are turning to other people and saying, is this what I should do? Is this what I should purchase? Do you think this is okay? And we as godly people, we're saying, oh yeah, that, that's, that's really good. That's good, that's good. But are we even praying about that? So the next time somebody asks you for advice, let me ask you to stop and say this. Let me pray about it first. Before you give anybody advice. Let me stop. Let me pray about it. Okay? Of course, if you know that, it's, if they ask you a, a, one of those common sense questions that I was talking to you about, you know, should I cheat on my spouse? You just go ahead and tell them no. I mean, come on. There's some things we don't have to ask. We should know. All right? Paul goes on to say, Brethren, I have you not to be ignorant. All right? That word ignorant in today's language means stupid. Okay? Paul's trying to say, you don't have to be stupid today. 
And stupid is not knowing. Okay, ignorant is not knowing. There's no excuse for not knowing the Word of God, godly people. There's no excuse. Because every one of us should have a copy of God's Word. Every one of us should be having the, the availability to get into God's Word. The problem is, do we? So we've got to come to the conclusion to ask, are we asking God? Are we asking God? Are we listening to the voice of God? Now, what I want to do now is I want to switch gears a little bit and say, this is how you can prove that you are living in the will of God. That you are living by the plan of God. Scripture tells us, he says in verse 2, Paul says that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Well, how do you prove it? Well, he just set forth some instructions for us. Number one, we go back and we see in verse 1, he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. In other words, there should be a time in our life that we should submit to the will of God. Go ahead. Say, okay, this is what Jesus prayed in the garden before he were to hang on the cross. Not my will, but your will. Lord, I know what I want to do, but God, I want your will. I want your plan more than anything. You see, number one, before we can ever know the will of God. Before we can ever know the plan of God, we must submit to the plan of God. We must come to a part of our life to say, nothing else matters. I will submit to you. And that's where God's coming to in, in Psalm chapter 81. All oh, that my people would listen to me. All oh, that my people would listen and submit to me. All oh, that my people will surrender their will to mine. Because we all agreed a while ago, God's plan is best. God's will is good. God's plan is perfect. It is acceptable. So why not go ahead and just say, okay, Lord, it's not my will, but yours that will be done. That's how we should pray. That's how we should be communicating with like believers. When we get together and we say, oh, let's, let's have a fish fry today. Let's have a fish fry. Is that according to God's will? Oh, yeah, it is. Girl, we're going to have to have a healing service over here. <laughs> so, so when we think about, oh, do we build a new building? Oh, do we start a new Sunday school? Oh, do we do this? Do we do that? Do we do this? It's exactly the same way in your personal life as it is with the church. We need to pray about it. We seek the Lord about it. We listen to the voice of God about it. But the problem still remains, do we? Do we? You know, sometimes we say this, Lord, bless me. Lord, bless my ministry. Lord, bless this building. Lord, bless this food. Lord, bless my job. Lord, bless this. Bless that. Bless this. Where do we get off telling God what to do? Where do we get to the point of saying, okay, God, this is what I've done, now you bless it. That is totally wrong. Totally off track. What we need to be praying is, okay, God, where are you blessing? Because I want to be part of it. I want to be part of that ministry that God's blessing. I want to be part of that church that God's blessing. I want to be part of that life that God is blessing because I want some of it. I want to be part of it. I want to reach out and touch some of it. I want to be where the presence of God is. I want to be where God is blessing. That ought to be our attitude. Not, God, you need to bless me today. Listen, I'm just as guilty. I pray it all the time. Pray it all the time. Lord bless this. Lord bless this church. Lord bless these people. But really our prayer needs to be, God, I want to be where you are blessing. Where you're already pouring out your blessings. That's where we need to be. So submit yourself to God. That's step number one. Submit. He says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? In the Old Testament, there was an animal that was brought and it was sacrificed for sin. Jesus tells us that he was the living sacrifice. Jesus died on the cross for you and for me. He was the sacrifice for all sins. And so now we see instruction by the inspired Spirit of God. Submit. Sacrifice yourself. Be a living sacrifice. In other words, every day we are to be a sacrifice. 
We are to sacrifice our life. We are to sacrifice every area of our life. In other words, we're to submit. We're to sacrifice our ways. We're to sacrifice our life. And say, okay, Lord, what would you have for me? What would you have for me to do? You know what the problem is in America today? We are instructing our children to go to secular education. Go to college. Get your degree. Become a doctor. Become a lawyer. Become whatever. But Jesus says, I'll make you fishers of men. I'll make you who you need to be. I wonder how many college graduates graduate and they end up doing something totally different than what they went to school to do. Because maybe they never asked the Lord, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to be? What do you want me to do with my life, Lord? What, where, where do you want me to work? What would you have me to do? You see, it's, it's submitting to the will of God. Number two, he says we're to separate ourselves from the world. He says not only present yourselves, a, your bodies a living sacrifice as, as a holy and acceptable, reasonable service to God, but he says in verse 2, do not be conformed to this world. I wonder how many of our decisions are based upon the ways of this world. I wonder how many times we make decisions, not according to what God would have us to do, but according to what the world tells us to do. I wonder how many times we make decisions because we saw a commercial on TV. There was this commercial a while back. Some of you may have seen this Snickers commercial. I mean, these four guys are traveling in this car. And in the back seat, this woman just yak, 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 just a yak and yak. And they gave him a snicker and he turns back into a man. I, I, I wonder sometimes if that's how we are. I wonder how many times that we, we're so discouraged in life. It's like, why is all this happening to me? What's going on in my life? I'm not happy. I'm not happy. And then all of a sudden we say, Lord, we do submit to your will. I want your way. And all of a sudden we have some peace come over us. All of a sudden, we, we're not discouraged anymore. We're not, in fact, we're positive because we can say, man, God's been good to me. Oh, the Lord's blessing me. How many, is anybody testify that today? The Lord's blessing you? Lord blessing you today? Hey, you're alive and walking today. The Lord's blessing you. The Lord's blessing you. Hey, the Lord's blessing our church. God's blessing churches across our nation today, in our county. We've got to keep doing what God has called us to do. But we're to separate ourselves from the world. Don't think like the world. The world's got a different mindset. Don't dress like the world. Don't act like the world. Don't talk like the world. Don't bring that filthy garbage mouth into the house of God. And I, I got to go a step further. As I said this last week, if you wouldn't say it in church, don't say it outside of church. If you wouldn't say it face to face, don't say it. Don't say it at all. Because how many's ever regretted what you said? Everybody, raise your hand. We've all regretted what we've said. I, I mean, when we think about this, sometimes we say things because it's according to the world and not according to the plan of God. So. Don't think like the world. Don't act like the world. Don't talk like the world. 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So in other words, if you're a born-again Christian, you're not going to have a love for the things of this world. You're not going to love the activities of this world. I, I, I want to share something with you on this. I, I, I didn't know if I was going to share this or not. I want to tell you why I don't drink alcohol. A lot of people drink alcohol today because mainly it's acceptable. Well, the Bible says don't get drunk. Well, let's take it a step further. Now, by no means am I trying to pat myself on the back. By no means am I trying to say that I'm any better than anybody else. I just want to share with you why I don't drink alcohol. Why I have never drank a beer. Why I have never drank wine. If 
First of all, I had a little brother that was killed at three years old. By a drunk driver. I made a commitment. I said, I won't drink. This is what it did to my brother. It's no good. No good. It only leads to shame. It only leads to negative things. I won't do it. And this, the other reason why I don't drink beer, alcohol, wine, because it's a stumbling block. I don't think you'd want me to drink beer as your pastor. Because number one, I wouldn't do it right here in the house of God. So if you're doing something outside, let me ask you, would you do it inside church? And if you wouldn't do it inside church, guess what? You might, ought to, might not be doing it. You're talking like the world, acting like the world, drinking like the world, change it. Now listen, all I'm trying to do is help you discern to prove that you're in the will of God. Because there's a lot of decisions. This is why we're, we're not to be drunk with wine, okay? Why we don't get drunk is because you're not controlled by the Holy Spirit at that point. You're controlled by substance. And I use alcohol as an example. It can be drugs. It can be prescription drugs. It can be whatever. It can be gambling. Whatever. Whatever you want to call it. When we're not controlled by the Holy Spirit, we're controlled by someone else or something else. And that's why it's important. If we want to discern the will of God, we must submit to God and we must separate ourselves from the world. That's just to prove it. So that way, when, when you come to me, or you go to someone else and you ask them, uh, do, do you know if I'm in the will of God? Is this according to His plan? They should ask you, are you submitting to God? Are you separating yourself from the world? Well, we're just proving it right here. Number three, set your mind on Christ. He goes on to say, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We are to set our minds on Christ. We are to have Heavenly thinking, not worldly thinking. We are to set our minds on Christ. We are to say, what would Jesus do in this situation? When you go and you purchase a vehicle, you purchase a car, when you're investing money, whatever you're doing, stop and say, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus handle this situation? Set your mind on Christ. So when you set your mind on Christ, you will have confidence after you make that decision and somebody else comes to you this is why I pray about every decision. Because I want confidence. When somebody comes to me and says, I told you you shouldn't have done that. I told you. I want to be able to look them in the eye and say, no, the Lord told me to do it. The Lord said to do it. The Lord gave me permission to do it. And sometimes we give up on God. We say, Lord, I can't hear you. I can't hear your voice. And he's trying to say, cut the radio off. Cut the TV off. Get off Facebook. Open the Word. Listen. Listen. It's common sense. Oh, I know what you're thinking. It would have been nice to be like Moses when he walked up upon that burning bush and he heard the voice of God. He responded to the voice of God. When Noah was told by God to build the ark, they had a conversation. When Gideon was asked to do something, he says, Okay, God, well, well give me a sign. Give me a sign. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to hear God like that? Listen, we are more blessed. We're more blessed because we have the Word of God. We have the Spirit of God. We have godly people. We have prayer. We have circumstances that we can hear the voice of God. We're more blessed today. They had prophets. And even we hear that Jesus said, if they wouldn't have listened to the law of Moses and the prophets, what makes you think they're going to listen to a dead man? What makes you think that they're going to listen to the voice of God? I, there, there was a time that I was praying a few years ago. I said, Lord, they're not listening to the message. They're not listening to preaching. And the Lord says, well, they're not listening to me either. What makes you think they're going to listen to you? A lot of truth to that. Why is it? Why is it that I expect you to listen to me when you're not listening to God? You see, that's why it's so important that we as Christians, we listen to God. And it's not just when times are going rough. It's not when just circumstances are bad. It's even during the good times. It's when God's blessing and God's pouring it out. We need to be listening 
to the voice of God. Now listen, here in a few minutes, we're going to be observing the Lord's table. This is going to be a time that we need to reflect in our own personal lives. We examine ourselves. And this is how we are to examine ourselves. Are we living our life that's pleasing to God? Now I chose to have the Lord's Supper at the very end. Because I believe that we need to do business with God before we come to the table. We're going to have an invitation time. We're going to have an altar time. You can come forward. You can stay right where you're at. But you need to do business with God today. You need to examine your life. Are you submitting to the will of God? Are you submitting? Are you surrendering to the plan of God? Or do you got it all figured out yourself? You got your own plans. You got your own ways. Oh, that my people would listen to me. That Israel, my people, would walk in my ways. That's God's plea for every person today. Submit to the will of God. Separate ourselves from the world. I mean, there should be something different about you. When you're walking out through the world today, there ought to be something different. There ought to be a, a glowing light around you. There ought to be something different. Not that you just fit in. And do you have your mind set on Christ? Set your mind on the heavenly things. And that's how you'll figure out. That's how you can prove yourself. You can prove if you're in God's will. Because if you're not submitting yourselves, you're, you're living according to the way of the world, and you've got your mind set on earthly things, guess what? You're not living according to God's plan. God has so much in store for you. God loves you so much. And God wants the best for you. He wants the best for you and your family. He wants the best for this church. But we've got to listen. We've got to listen and obey. And as I told the children, sometimes it must be instant obedience. Instant. When God says, we must act. It must be instant. Sometimes, we as Baptists, we're, we're guilty about this. I'll pray about it. Anybody ever used that excuse before? Or is it just me? Okay. Somebody says, preacher, we need to do this. And I say, oh, we better pray about it. We better pray about it. Two years later, oh, I'm still praying about it. I'm praying about it. Sometimes we need to have that instant obedience. When God says to do it, you do it. Because if God's telling you to do it, He's going to find a way. He's going to equip the way. He's going to help you. Here in just a minute, we're going to be praying. And I want us to be searching our hearts. Because first of all, we need to know, are we born again believers? Are we born again? Because there's no... There's nothing worse than knowing that somebody is at war with God. Because if you're not saved, you're battling God. You're at war with God. There's no peace in your life. Yeah, you might have temporary happiness in the world, but as far as thinking eternally, you're at war with God. So I beg you, I beseech you, brethren, as Paul would say, present yourselves as a living sacrifice. Holy, set apart, living your life according to God. And the first plan that God has in store for you is that you be saved. Every one of you. If there's never been a time that you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart to forgive you of your sins, I beg you, before the service is over, you make that decision today. You say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Give me eternal life. I'll live my life for you. See, right there, you submitted to the Lord. You know that there's a higher being. You know that God's in control. And you know that God has a plan. Would everyone please stand? I'm going to pray with you. We're going to have a time of invitation. And then we're going to observe the Lord's table. Father, today... I pray for your mercies. Pray for your grace, your forgiveness. Because Lord, even as a pastor, as a preacher, I'm human. I make mistakes. Lord, I need your forgiveness. 
Lord, I need your salvation. Lord, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on that cross. To die in shame. To take the weight of the world. To take every sin and poured out His blood as a sin offering. Lord, it just means so much to know that You love each and every one of us to the point of You'll give Your life for us. So Father, I pray today that every person that can hear my voice, God knows without a doubt, number one, that they've been saved. They've been redeemed. They've been forgiven. And Father, I pray that even if there's one here today that needs to rededicate their life, needs to turn over a new leaf, needs to turn directions, God, I pray they make that commitment to you today. God, I pray that every decision that we make, every walk, every step that we take is according to your will, your way. Father, we want to hear from you. We want you to reveal yourself to us. So Lord, we want to set a pattern in our life that we will read your word, we'll obey your word. Lord, we want to start a new prayer life with you. God, that we can communicate. God, I pray that you bless that person that has prayed that. Lord, as we are called godly people, oh Lord, I pray that we give godly advice. That it's according to your word and your way. Lord, we thank you for this church. Lord, we thank you for the activities that are going to take place this afternoon. We ask you, Lord, to use it. Lord, that your name be magnified. Lord, right now, this altar, I pray that you have already established. I pray, God, that it be used. I pray, Lord, that it be a way that somebody can be relieved of their burdens. But, Father, most of all, if someone needs to hear your voice, God, I pray that you reveal it to them. Lord, speak to us, and it's in Jesus' name. Amen.